Hi everyone, I'm Law of the West, and welcome to my buyer's guide for the Greycat STV. And this vehicle essentially skipped over the whole concept sales phase and went straight to being a drivable asset in game. And because of that, I've had a chance to actually spend some time with it and get a feel for how it handles, which also has given me the opportunity to see how it sizes up when compared to some of the other vehicles. So I'll start things off by talking about what kind of vehicle it is, and then give some reasons why someone would want to get the STV. And also I'll be doing a short If It Sits It Fits segment, and then I'll finish things off by giving you what my overall impressions are for it. So what kind of vehicle is the STV? It could be best described as kind of an open canopy sports utility vehicle. It seats two passengers, has a couple of weapons racks, and it can hold two standard size hand boxes in the trunk. And what they mean by a hand box is a small crate that would hold a single item in it like a helmet or an armor piece. It was designed to be good for off-roading and it seems like it would be right at home cruising around in the untamed plains of the outback. But it still isn't as rugged as something like the Cyclone which was built for traversing a much harsher kind of environment. However, it definitely is a noticeable step up from the Great Cat PTV which, let's face it, is more of a glorified golf cart. The STV seems to be part of a new wave of vehicles that are being released which are more economical in nature than they are combat ready. And this modest sized four wheeler has no defense or offensive capabilities which means that it doesn't have any shields or weapons of any kind. So what good is it then? Because even your standard gravelet bike has shields and a couple of weapons strapped to the front of it. My take on it is that this vehicle was made for safe zones and for players who aren't going to be interested in combat. And there's a lot of benefits to gain if you can strip away things like weapons, shielding, and heavy armor which would only end up weighing a vehicle down and needlessly jacking up its price. Another thing about the SRV is that there may be a growing need for it and other vehicles like it in the future. And that's because the very nature of armistice zones are changing. And I have a suspicion that at some point as cities grow and the surrounding villages begin to take root, they're going to start putting new rules into place when it comes to the kinds of vehicles that they're going to allow you to drive. They haven't even begun to start constructing roadways for major landing zones yet, but they are coming. Of course, some areas are going to end up becoming bad reenactments of a Mad Max movie, while other places like Terra are going to have safe zones that will have a zero tolerance attitude towards most of the murder hobo-esque behavior that's become common practice in Stanton. That's where vehicles like the Mule, the Cyclone, the RC, and the RN, the Quad Bike, and the Grey Cats are all going to come into play. None of them have offensive capabilities, and thus are going to most likely be the only forms of transportation that are going to be allowed to be driven within the city limits. And CIG is constantly looking for ways to justify non-combat vehicles, and I guarantee that they're going to eventually enact something along these lines at some point in the future. The SRV is also going to be a good vehicle for a small ship to use as an alternative to a gravlev. And the reason why that's so important is because no-fly zones are going to not only impact ships, but also gravlevs. So when you encounter one, it's going to be good to have some kind of ground transportation that you could use in lieu of a grab lev. Another good use for the STV would be for people who are into min-maxing. And at some point, weight is going to start impacting things like a ship's VTOL strength, its fuel consumption, and its overall speed and maneuverability. And anyone who wanted to min-max their ship's weight would naturally tend to choose the lightest ground vehicle that they can, so that it has the least amount of impact on their ship's ability to perform. And the STV is going to be the lightest vehicle that can still hold some storage, stow a few weapons, and be able to carry a couple of people. Another reason for someone to look into getting the STV is because it's going to be extremely difficult to spot one using radar, even if the enemy's flying directly overhead. That's because it doesn't have any weapons, it doesn't have any life support systems, and it has no shields. So its combined EM and IR signatures are going to be almost non-existent. The hover quad is supposed to have an insanely small EM and IR footprint for these same reasons, but a conventional vehicle like the SRV will inherently have an even lower signature than that. And you could put stealth components into it and drop that signature down even further. So if you want to have the best chance of not being spotted from above, this is going to be the vehicle to use. At the beginning of this video I said I was going to do a short If It Sits It Fits segment on the STV and it is going to be short because there's only a few ships that I was unsure as to whether or not it could be used as a transport for this vehicle. And they're the Titan, the Reliant Core, the Argo Cargo, and the Pisces. And pretty much everything else that can hold more than 10 SCUs of cargo internally can carry an STV. It's not a matter of if at that point, it's a matter of how many. And the first ship from that list that I tried out was the Avenger Titan. And you can get an SRV up the ramp and halfway in. 
but in Star Citizen, getting something halfway means that only half of its exploded husk will end up inside of the ship when you engage the quantum drive. So that's going to be a no for the Titan. The next ship that I was curious about was the Core Reliant, and I was shocked to find out that I could get an STV all the way inside of it. And although it was a bit of a tight fit, I was still able to exit the vehicle and get inside the pilot seat. You just have to make sure to park it at an angle in order to create enough clearance for you to get around its front tire and into the cockpit. Next on the list was the Argo Cargo. I didn't really think that this was going to work, but I still had to try for science, and science failed me. Yet again. So that's also going to be an NOPE for the MPUV. The last ship on my list of uncertainties was the Pisces. I looked at the back of it, then looked over at the front end of the STV, and realized that this really was going to end up being a coin flip. So I tried it out, and I could get it in pretty far, but once again, just like with the Titan, it's either all or nothing when it comes to vehicle transportation. So that's also going to be a no for the Pisces. My overall impression of this vehicle is that it's fast, it's fun to drive, and has a little extra light storage capabilities, so that gives it a bit of utility on top of being a solid way to transport two people around. If I was going to try and compare it to any of the other vehicles, then I'd pick the Hover Quad and the Mule. And that's because these three have a lot in common, but they also seem to trade off abilities among one another. That way, any one of them isn't going to be clearly better than the others. But like with most things in Star Citizen, it's more about what you want to use it for that gives it value. And the STV seems to be a nice compromise between the Hover Quad and the Mule, but has that extra benefit of being able to carry two people. The one and only real downside to it is that it's not going to be for people who want something that's combat ready. Well, that's going to be it for this in-game look at the Greycat STV. Thanks for watching, and take care.